Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys tonight because we're gonna be talking about how to know if you are really repairing your adrenal glands. So let me paint a picture for you. You're exhausted, you're tired, you're burnt out, you don't deal with stress very well, you get overwhelmed, potentially you get anxious, you crash in the middle of the day, um, you, you can't catch your breath, you get panic attacks, you can't get cold on a hot day or you can't get hot on a cold day, um, you don't go to bed at night because you're wired, you can't wake up in the morning because you're tired, um, you wake up through the, the night and you just know that your health isn't doing well, you're, you're not handling the stress the way that you used to and besides that you have no energy. So what do you do? You go to the doctor and the doctor runs tests and they say everything's normal. Okay, well, how's that possible? So then what do you do? You go to a specialist. Specialist runs some tests and again, you're told that you're normal. So then what do you do? So then you go to the internet, you start looking at Dr. Google and you start finding out that, hey, I think this has something to do with my adrenal glands. I, I'm stressed, uh, I, I don't deal with stress very well, um, I can't focus, I can't concentrate. I have all those things we talked about. So, so then what do you do? You go back to the doctor. Now you have, you're armed with ammunition and you say, I got adrenal fatigue. And they say, they look at you like you're crazy. There's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. Um, maybe you should be on antidepressants or maybe you should be on anti-anxiety medications or maybe you should go see the psychologist or we'll humor you and we'll do a, a cortisol test and, and show you that your adrenals are working fine. And then what happens is you just try to fix this on your own and you start researching and you start looking into things. You got a thousand and one different supplements in your kit up, you know, in your drawer. And everyone in your family doesn't believe that, you know, this is still going on. You're, you're crazy. You're spending lots of money. Um, all of these things. How, how many of these things relate to you? I'm sure a lot of them do. And then what happens ultimately is you put your own program together. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how do you know if you're really repairing your adrenal glands? It's really, really important. We're going to talk about these five things to give you some outline as if you know, how do you know if you're, you're actually repairing it? This is what I see with my practice. Uh, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen, and I suffered with an adrenal fatigue problem myself many, many years ago, and it was debilitating. I had just graduated from, from college. I had over, you know, uh, close to $200,000 in debt. I was ready to take on my own practice and I just was exhausted and burnt out. And I saw my picture in the definition of adrenal fatigue. I thought, what, what is this? I, how come I don't know about this? How can I be a doctor? How can I have an exercise physiology degree? How can I be a, you know, a, a degree in psychology? I never even heard of this. And not to mention um, canceling on my friends, wanting to go out, flaking on them, thinking I'm gonna have enough energy, but not having the energy. Just had to figure it out on my own and that's what i've done and that's what i want to try to help you guys do today with this facebook live so okay so the first thing that i would say is um, are you focusing on the adrenals only so that's a huge problem because stress wear and tear blood sugar um, adrenaline caffeine stimulants nicotine um, processed foods all of those things are gonna impact your body, gonna cause inflammation in your body, it's gonna impact the adrenals. So here's what happens. Patients go to the doctor, they say, hey, I heard about this thing called adrenal fatigue, can you test me for it? And they look at you like you have two heads, there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue. Okay, so then you do a test, they do a, an ACTH stimulation test, and they find out, you know what, your adrenals are working properly. And I've gotta tell you that, most hormone problems are not as a result of an impaired um, glandular problem. The gland is working fine. It's just everything that takes place after that. And what will happen is if you go to a functional medicine doctor um, and, and they get the idea that, hey, something's going on with the adrenals, this is the way they look at it. They do a saliva test. And a saliva test says that you have really high cortisol or a saliva test says you have really low cortisol or a saliva test says it goes up and down, it's a dysregulated rhythm. And, and that's good, I do do saliva tests, but here's the thing, only one to 2% of those saliva tests represent 98 to 99% of your total hormones. Let me say that again, 
Saliva is only measuring the free fraction of the hormone. It doesn't measure the metabolized component. How much is your body really producing? How can you bet on something that says 1% to 2% is high, meaning 98 to 99% must be high? That's a huge problem, and I've made that mistake myself. But here's what typically happens. Doctors, the functional medicine doctors or the doctors that think outside the box will say, hey, you have really high adrenals, so let's work on getting those lower, and we'll give you phosphatidylserine, and you'll take you know, some adaptogens, and that will lower your adrenals based on a false premise, based on the fact that maybe that 1% to 2% is representative of the 98 to 99%. And then you'll have other doctors that will say, well, you know what, in the beginning, the adrenals are really high, and then over time, they're really low. And what I would say to you is there's 10 different functions that can break down when the adrenal glands aren't working properly, 10. First one is, is there an HPA axis problem? Is the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenals, are they talking to each other properly? Properly, Is there excess hormone messing up these feedback loops? Are you taking synthetics? Are you taking bioidenticals? If you are, those will mess up those feedback loops. Is the gland actually making it? That's the typical um, looking at a secondary or a, a primary problem, doing a stimulation test, looking at the pituitary number, then looking at the gland number and seeing if it's high or low. Um, is there an upregulation of the hormone? Maybe you're producing too much of the hormone or a downregulation of your conversion. Are there problems with disruptors? Those are big problems. Drugs and medications and chemicals in the environment can really cause your free fraction of the hormone to be off, meaning you have too much bound to the protein and none can get out, or you don't have enough bound and too much is getting in. Those are big problems. Is there a problem with the liver? Is it able to clear it out of there? Is there a problem with the gut health? Is it able to clear it out of there? Can the, excuse me, I don't, I guess Siri wanted to say something. Um, can the hormones be cleared properly? If they're not being cleared, they're recirculating and binding to receptors. That's a huge problem. How are you going to see that on a saliva test? You're just not going to see it. Are there partially metabolized hormones that are going and binding to different, different receptors? And um, are there other endocrine re uh, receptors causing the problems inside the cell? So suffice it to say, the number one problem with you not fixing your adrenal glands is by only focusing on A, the adrenal glands themselves, and that being it's either too high, it's either too low, or even if it's just an HPA axis dysfunction, that doesn't talk about your liver, that doesn't talk about the receptors, that doesn't talk about the biotransformation in the GI system. That doesn't talk about endocrine disruptors. That doesn't talk about hormones and chemicals that you're taking. So bottom line is, is that you can't just focus on the adrenals. You got to go much more in depth. Number two, the toolkit. I'm going to call this the environmental toolkit with the doctors nowadays. Doctors are awesome, awesome people. They go to school. They learn. They try to help their, their fellow man. Um, but then what happens is they just, they lose interest, they get pigeonholed into a medical model, and they do things the same way over and over again. They don't sharpen the saw, if you will. And we're talking about environmental toolkits, mold. What about mold? What about Lyme disease? A lot of doctors will say it doesn't even exist. What about Epstein-Barr virus and other viruses? They'll say, oh, I'm sorry, your total IgA is high. That means it's a past infection. So you don't have anything. Don't worry about it. Go to the psychiatrist. Or what about um, leaky gut? They look at you like, hey, there's no such thing. At least their journals are showing nowadays that there is such thing as a leaky gut and permeable membranes. What about food sensitivities? What about um, different types of uh, pathogens that exist together? And biofilms. What does that do? What about genetics? What about looking at that ancestry thing and telling you it goes more than just taking methylfolate and getting off of folic acid and B12? There's much more to that. There are COMT, there's PNMT, there's MAO, MAOA, MAOB. There's so many enzymes that you have to sharpen your toolkit and doctors aren't sharpening their toolkit. And who loses? The patient loses. The person who's exhausted and burnt out loses. The patient that was told there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue loses. 
the patient that was told that they were crazy and there's nothing wrong with them loses because the doctor didn't look in the mirror and say, hey, maybe I know, don't know as much as I possibly could know. That's another way you know you're not repairing your adrenal glands. Number three, hierarchy. Are you putting a hierarchy on this? Meaning, let's say, oh yeah, I know I have heavy metal toxicity, so I'm gonna do a detox. I heard about the Andy Cutler program. It's a great program. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna pull all this metal out and I'm gonna be great. Really, what about minerals? What about ATP production? What about oxygen, oxy, oxygen availability? What about cell membrane repair? What about inflammation control? What about um, digestion, assimilation, absorption? What about all those things? You got to do those things first. Don't be putting the cart before the horse and don't be getting fancy with your shiny objects and saying, oh, I got to go to that shiny object when I got to do the boring stuff that, you know, that is boring and requires me to make changes and requires me to look in the mirror, control my blood sugar, get, you know, get control of my life, unravel the, the ball of yarn and put a hierarchy to this. Because if you don't, you're going to really, really, really crash and burn. It's going to be a huge problem. Number four, the healthcare model. You know, each one of these individual problems, if you're not focusing on to fix the actual energy production of your body, not just the adrenals, um, can be a, a little a lesson on its own. It really could. Healthcare model for sure. It is a broken model. I mean, let's face it. High deductibles, big co-payments, can't see this guy, can't see that guy. Why are we paying this much money for healthcare when it doesn't cover the things that we want it to cover? You know, when you look at an ICD-10 code, it has to fit a narrow definition with very wide ranges where if you're not over the range and you're not sicker than the average sick person that took the test the year before, then you're told you're normal. Normal doesn't necessarily mean healthy. As a result of that, when your blood tests are normal, then your doctor A looks at you like you're crazy, there's no such thing as adrenal fatigue, get you on some medications to control your anxiety and depression, and the, the bottom line is now healthcare and insurance doesn't have to pay for these tests. Why? Because they're not, they're not medically necessity. They're not medically necessary. You haven't fit the definition of a very, very narrow ICD-10 code. And so now that you don't fit that di definition, they don't just give you the protocol, which is ultimately medication and uh, maybe some supplements and move on out. I mean, that's a broken model. It's a hugely broken model. And it's really, really sad um, because, you know, doctors want to help people um, and they are pigeonholed into a corner. Um, they do a great job, the traditional medical doctors. And when it comes time to uh, a, an acute based injury or an acute based condition or some kind of life saving procedure, great, great stuff. I mean, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world than be in the US to get you know, a good um, uh, acute based approach. But when you have a chronic problem, when you have stress that's just overwhelming you, when your cells aren't breathing properly, when you're not repairing your tissues, when you're not detoxifying, when you have HPA axis dysregulation, when you have biotransformation and liver problems, when you have hormone disruptors and endocrine disruptors and chemical disruptors and pesticides and sprays and pathogens and parasites and molds and candida and yeast, when you have all that stuff, how are you going to medicate that to good health? How are you going to do that? It's a broken healthcare model system. It scares me to think how bad it's gotten. But you know what? The bad and sad part of that is, is we allow the healthcare model to make the decision for us. Is it covered by my insurance? No, I can't do it. Um, do you guys take my insurance? No, can't see you. And I get that. I get it. Listen, you pay a lot of money. You have a job. You have a family. You're on insurance. You maybe even work at a job that you hate because it's an insurance coverage and you want it to cover. And then you find out that it doesn't cover the things that you want to cover. That's a shame. It really is. But I tell patients, don't shoot the messenger. Whenever you have been decisive about something, and whenever you found that it was a will to get there, an education, a car, your house, did you go to your health insurance and say, hey, can you pay for this house? Can you pay for this, um, this uh, car? 
can you pay for my education? No, you didn't. And guess what? It doesn't pay for that. But then all of a sudden, when it comes time to come out of pocket to pay for your health, it's not covered by my insurance. I'm not going to do it. So there's a combination of factors there. It's not just the fact that the healthcare model is broken. It, there's the should be world and the is world. The should be world is it should pay for the stuff. Is world it doesn't. It really doesn't. And, and it's really sad. And then lastly, the fifth thing that we see is the stress footprint. That is actually should put a little TM there, trademark. That is the ninja's trademark himself, the stress footprint. So you know about the ecological footprint. You're trying to reduce the, the toxins or your, 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 your use of uh, using up your, your share of the environment's resources, and you want to lower your, your footprint. Well, I said you should lower your stress footprint. So that means you have to block out extra static. You got you to gotta, you know, take time to smell the roses. You got to eat wholesome, nutritious, ancestral-based foods, meaning stuff that doesn't look like grandma wouldn't know what it was, stuff that, um, that takes time to prepare, stuff that comes from the earth, not from the labs, stuff that's not hybridized, stuff that's not GMO'd, sprays, chemical, modified corn syrup, all called blue dye, number yellow, or number three. I don't know. I mean, maybe there is. If you can't pronounce that name, you're not lowering your stress footprint. You're really not. But this also comes down to gratitudes, celebrations, distinctions, all that kind of stuff. If you're not lowering your stress footprint, and guess what another lowering your stress footprint is? Is looking at your supplements and trying to eliminate them. And looking at your protocols and trying to do less, not more. Those are the things that I would say are going to be how you're going to know if you're really repairing from your adrenal gland problem. We see it time and time again. And so I do these Facebook lives because number one, I'm on a mission to, to help raise awareness that adrenal fatigue or better yet mitochondrial fatigue is a real condition. And if you don't like the definition, that's too bad. Um, we identify with it, but we know deep down that it goes much more deeper than the adrenals. And, and I'm on a mission to sort of change healthcare. I really am. And, and get people thinking outside the box. And, and number two, I do these because I'm good at this. I can help you get better. If you are looking to get some support and you want to get back into the game and, and think about what it's costing you. I mean, really, what is it costing you? I mean, what does it cost to not function at your fullest in your second half of your life? or even in the first half of your life, and not be able to earn an income, not to be able to have true love and relationships, not to be able to travel, not to be able to be focused and concentrated. What is the cost of all that? I mean, what's the price that you're paying not getting better? The people that I work with are the people that realize that this is a huge price to not get better. And if I can't get better, then, then the cost of me not getting better is a lot more pricey, and I can't put a price on that, than the cost to get better. Those are the people that I work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link to um, scheduling a, a no obligation. It's a troubleshooting session with me and my team, and um, we're going to put it in here, but we do it for a couple reasons. We do it because of the mission that we're on to change, you know, one starfish, one shell at a time, so to speak, and throw that into the ocean. And people say, why did you take the time to put that you know, starfish back in the water. And, uh, you know, there's thousands and thousands of starfish on the shore. Why did you take the time? You can't possibly get to that, you know, all those starfish. And, and I think it was uh, a, a little kid and said, but I can get to this one. I kind of butchered that. But, you know, that's the point is one person at a time, you know, and that's what it really was going to take. Number two, we really feel that we do a lot of different things than what, we, than what you're seeing traditionally. And, and number three, we're tired of seeing you guys navigate on your own and, and doing the work on your own and looking at the genetics. I talk to you guys. You guys are smart. You guys know you're not dumb. You're not, it's not for the lack of trying and the lack of wanting. You guys are really smart. And what I would say is try not to identify yourself as this is who you are. This is your identity. I can't tell you to how many people that I talk to that I say, what is it that you really want? What is missing from your life? What would you do if I, if I solve this for you? And they look at me like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. That's a problem. 
Why don't you know? Why haven't you given your permission to know? What is it that you are having on your bucket list that you want to do? You want to be a cool grandma. You want to be able to get into the water. You want to be able to get off your butt. You want to be able to go and do things. And you want to have a sound mind. And you don't want to be in pain. You want to be able to focus and concentrate and be able to recall your last sentence or why you walked into a room because you forgot what you were doing. You want to look healthy. You want to fit into those last, you know, those jeans that you used to fit into. You want to have libido and a passionate sex life. You want to have all those things. Those are the things that you want. So we're going to put a link on that in the, in, in the, um, in the description so that you guys can sign up for that. So hopefully you got a lot out of that. Um, I think I'm going to try to answer some of your questions here um, because, um, you know, I know that the Q&A is really helpful for you guys. So, hey, Nina, hope you're well. And Liz and, and Lisa, we talked to you the other day. Um, Paul, hope you're doing well. Um, so we have uh, Ella. Um, the HCL pepsin uh, really works for me, but huge detox symptoms. I don't know if that's detox symptoms. Um, you know, HCL is really great for breaking down foods. Um, it also helps create more methionine, uh, and methionine will also make more SAMe, and it can produce more glutathione, and it can help with antioxidants. Um, it can also help you absorb more iron and more B12, which will help with um, producing more um, neurotransmitters and breaking down hormones. Um, your body's not used to firing at you know fast cylinders. The example I would use on that one, I just this just popped into my mind. Um, you know, I, I'm from Canada, and uh, I would take a couple people to the hockey game, and they can't believe it. I can't follow the puck. I don't know where it's at. And um, that's kind of the analogy I would say is is that you're not up to speed. You know, if you go into the you know the hockey rink and you're a minor leaguer. And then you go into, you know, a, a, a semi-professional league. They're just too fast for you. You're overwhelmed. And so I would say start off slowly and realize that it's actually supporting you. And to tell you what, methylation, which I've posted in another link, is not a big detoxing um, component. It's not. It's more of an ATP producing component or energy producing component. And that extra energy is sometimes overworking the engine when you haven't fixed some of those cylinders or carburetors or exhaust or transmission you're just fixing the engine when you haven't fixed the supporting stuff would amino acids be good amino acids are great that's for sure um nicole hello and hi melissa hope you're doing well shanda i love the name hope you're well um michael good to talk good to see you earlier um carrie hope you're doing well still got to put some stuff together for you melissa has been a name that i haven't seen for a while we never talked i hope you had a good time in orlando um, definitely broken, lost my home due to health costs, insurance, didn't cover the tests and supplements I needed. It didn't, Paul, but you know what? Um, you know, if, if we, and I, and I say this with loving, with love in my heart is that's your, your, your wound to, to glorify and, 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 and mold who you are and, and know that you were meant for more and you need to get better. And it's not going to be, it's only going to be up to you mostly and, and people like myself and other people that care to get you better. So, but it definitely did create a huge problem I, I, for sure. And don't, you know, that's, so Mike is, is high HHV antibodies going to be a problem like HH, like ABV? Absolutely. Um, it's kind of the same family and um, it will deplete your raw materials. It will muck up your ATP. It will create biofilms. It will create ammonia and ure urea and mess up detoxification pathways from that way, um, big problems. So low libido can be fixed. Is it possible link to prostate pain? Um, lots going on there. I mean, I, I, it's a hard question to answer. Um, and then lastly, Mike, um, colloidal silver is good, definitely for that. And, and that's what we got. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of that today. Um, I'll leave the link to sign up for a call, um, but you gotta be serious. I mean, I don't want you to be kicking the tires. I wanna talk about where are you? Like, let's get crystal clear on what's working. Let's get crystal clear on what's not working. Let's look at the genetic component. Have you considered that? Let's look at the epigenetic component, all of the environmental triggers that are overlapping. And then lastly, let's see how those created the perfect storm and see what you're doing. And if I feel I can help you, I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. 
if I don't feel I can help you, I'll tell you that too. But hopefully we'll have some fun along the way and have a lot of value for you. But you got to be ready to get better. It's got to be more painful for you to not get better than it is to get better. You got to be super coachable and you got to be resourceful. So anyways, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. Hope you got a lot out of today's Facebook Live. We'll be doing this every Tuesday now. Um, if you guys got um, some questions or some topics you guys want me to talk about, I will definitely talk about those. And once again, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am the Adrenal Fatigue Recovery Ninja, and I look forward to ending your adrenal fatigue nightmare. Thank you so much.